Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome to Best Replays of the Week in World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. And I'm not being funny here, um, for reasons that will become obvious right now, because I'm about to explain them. First of course I'm going to struggle with the name of the star of today's show, I could just be lazy and call him Dave, but we're, we're going to say this is the, the Kivra? Yeah, that'll do. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, he actually tried to submit this replay file to best replays of the week, but in order to do that you have to upload it to worldoftanksreplays.com and for some bizarre reason, and I've tried myself, it just doesn't recognise the file format. Although, as you can quite plainly see, you can run the replay just fine, which is a real shame, because I think he was genuinely in with a decent chance of winning the prize for best replay of the week at the official site, but hey, You've just won Best Replay of the Week over here instead, so I hope that's some kind of consolation. Because when somebody says they've got 40,000 battles played in World of Tanks and this is the best one they've ever done, you pay attention. And I think he might be right. So let's get the obvious stuff out of the way first. Uh, the Kivra is in the T-55A, the East German version of the ubiquitous Soviet T-55 tank. This is a Tier 9 medium tank, he's in a Tier 9 assault battle game, here on the ghost town map. He is on the attacking team, so in order to win, they need to either capture the enemy base or destroy all of the enemy tanks. Or in other words, exactly what you have to do anyway during a random battle. Things are slightly different for the enemy team since they are the defending side. They simply have to prevent the base from being attacked, destroy all of the attacking tanks, or simply have somebody on the team alive at the end of the battle without their base being captured. The other thing that's different in assault mode is that the pressure is really on the attacking team here because unlike in a standard battle which lasts 15 minutes, an assault mode battle only lasts 10. Now something that I just said there is going to be very, very important. Remember, this is assault mode, so the defending team don't have a base to capture and they don't have to kill every tank on the attacking team's side. They simply have to survive until the end of the battle without their base being captured. So while it's not necessarily the best defensive strategy, they can afford to just take up defensive positions and wait for the attacking team to come to them. Enemy IKV spotted, another fire. He's trying to get out, but he's got to cross an awful lot of open ground while spotted in order to do it, and boom, there's the Kiva's first kill. Not the enemy team's first kill though, this battle is two minutes old and this team have already suffered seven casualties. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, it's not looking too good, is it? The team currently have one, two, three, four tanks in the town, and they are massively outnumbered. That's where the majority of the team's casualties have already happened. We've got a couple of shots, although none of these are kill shots. Uh, enemy tanks encircling the four remaining friendlies, battling it out in the ghost town itself. Oh, and they've just lost another two. <laughs> There's only six of them left alive on the team against uh, 12 enemies. And you don't need to be a tactical genius to realise that the two remaining friendlies in the town, the BZ-176 and the IS-6, although they have just been joined by an apparently suicidal T-44, but um, I mean they're putting up a good fight there, but there's no way they're going to prevail. They're just outnumbered way too heavily, so it is extremely likely that very soon there are only going to be three surviving tanks left on the team. He's got a shot at the Pershing there. It wasn't quite a kill, and he did get spotted. The Pershing, however, rather foolishly decides to waste time trying to get a return shot off rather than getting back into cover, so there's the key for his second kill. Um, but they have lost a further three tanks. <laughs> yep, exactly as predicted. Everybody in the town's dead. There's only three of them left against... 11 enemies. If he hadn't killed the Pershing, they would now be outnumbered exactly 3 to 1. Which is really bad, considering they were only outnumbered 2 to 1 less than a minute ago. And while those odds are terrible, they are going to get significantly worse before they start getting any better. They got some shots at the E. Oh, he's got him! Kill number 3. Okay, I lied. The odds did just get a little bit better. Potential kill here on the Progetto as well. Oh, he's been immobilized, and he's been knocked out too. Why are these guys attacking, by the way? You know, this is assault mode and you're on the defending team? You don't have to kill everybody to win. I mean, that would win the game for them. But you know what else would win the game for them? 
not charging out across open ground spotted and under fire from uh, three tanks in flanking positions as you charge across that open ground in order to get the kills that you don't actually need to win. All you have to do is prevent these three tanks, as that's all that's left on the Kivra's team, from capturing their base. You'd think between them the nine of them could manage that. They're trying to win harder, aren't they? <laughs> oh, the eight of them. The Udez 16 just got himself a kill on the Object 703. I mean, they're still massively and horribly outnumbered. They did just lose the Udez 16, so there's now only two of them left against eight. They are outnumbered. Four to one. Um, but as long as the enemy team continues pushing across open ground and getting themselves hit unnecessarily, the Kiva and the surviving Pershing do have a... Uh, perhaps not. The BZ-68 just managed to work his way around to the rear of the Pershing and took him out with means. The Kiva is now the last tank left alive on the team against eight enemies. That is as bad as the odds are going to get. He was outnumbered 8 to 1. Now he's only outnumbered 7 to 1. And remember, he's on the attacking team in assault mode. In order to win, he needs to either destroy every single tank on the enemy team or successfully capture the enemy base. All the enemy team have to do is nothing. Something that that guy just conspicuously failed to be able to do, which left him on 18 health, hunkered down and desperately waiting for assistance from the rest of the team, none of whom have to attack across open ground under the gun of a T-55A in order to win this battle. Fortunately for the Kivra, it's not just the Spucket TVP over there on 18 health who's been infected with victory disease. To be fair to the enemy team, they're at least not all coming at him one at a time. They're not doing the classic, and we've all seen it. All right, team, let's go. Who's with me? Nobody. <laughs> they all just watch you die and then turn around and look at each other and go, right, well, who's next? But they didn't even need to do that much. In fact, they didn't need to do anything at all. Instead, we have the Kiva here in a situation kind of reminiscent of that scene in The Dawn of the Dead when the medics turn up, the zombies eat them, then get on the medics' radio and say, send more medics. <laughs> Except this time it's tanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, send more tanks, because it's the only way the Zebra can win this battle. He's on the attacking team. He's never going to be able to get to the cap. He needs to kill everything. So, send more tanks. And the enemy team are only too happy to oblige. Even at this point, with four of them left, they could have easily won just by stopping attacking. Oh, the blind kill! <laughs> Because the four of them, now three of them, could easily have defended the cap in the less than three minutes that are remaining. But they just keep coming. Again, they do have the sense to at least not keep coming after him one at a time. But if it had been three at a time, with the Obsidian also joining in with the Tiger here, they might have actually had a chance of winning this. Wait, what am I saying? The enemy team have always had a chance of winning this. <laughs> They've just thrown away an 8-1 to defensive advantage. <laughs> and now it's a straight one-on-one. -on -one. And judging by the state of the health bars at the top of the screen, uh, that surviving obsidian on the enemy team is on full health. The Kiva is not. Two minutes left. In two minutes, there is no way the Kiva is making it across that open ground, undetected and undamaged, and taking control of the cap circle. But of course he doesn't have to, because the Obsidian comes out to fight him. <laughs> and yet the odds are still on the Obsidian side, because he started this battle with more than twice the health that the Kiva had remaining. So the Obsidian, absolutely 100%, still should have won this dogfight. And he manages to find a way to screw even that up. <laughs> so, uh, that's 11 kills. Yeah, really. 11 kills for the Kivra in this Tier 9 assault battle here on the Ghost Town map. This has to be the most unlikely victory I can remember seeing in recent memory. Uh, even by the standards of a Game of Thrones in my World of Warships video, this one was pretty special. Sadly, no post-battle results screen, because for some reason worldoftanksreplays.com just wasn't recognising this file format, which very, very sadly for the Kivra here means that he wasn't able to upload this uh, to have a shot at winning the weekly prize for best replays of the week. And honestly, 
I think he should have. But you've won best replay of the week here, the Kivra. Thank you so much for a hilariously entertaining battle and congratulations on a well-earned victory. Everyone else, hope you enjoyed it. Pretty sure you did. And as always, take care and I'll catch you next time.